Owl's big dream and the mysterious voice it was a windy, whirling kind of morning in the hundred-acre wood. The sky was filled with clouds that hurried across it as if they were racing to some unseen destination. The trees swayed in the breeze, their branches bending as if bowing to the wind. Owl, sitting in his cozy study, peered out the window, watching the weather with a keen eye. This is the perfect day, Owl said to himself, the perfect day to begin my most important work yet. And so, Owl picked up his favorite quill, dipped it into the inkwell, and began to write. But this was not just any writing. Today, Owl was beginning his grandest project, a book about his famous relative, Uncle Robert. Uncle Robert, a legend in his lifetime, Owl muttered as he scrawled the title across the top of the page. Yes, indeed, he said proudly. This will be a monograph, a serious piece of work. Outside Owl's house, Tigger and Rue were busy playing a game they called Falling Leaves. The rules were simple. Grab as many leaves as you could, toss them into the air, and dodge them as they fell. If a leaf touched you, you had to perform a funny forfeit. Tigger was in the middle of a forfeit, standing on his head and trying to sing Twinkle Twinkle Little Star backward when Owl popped his head out of the window. Will you two keep it down? Owl hooted angrily. Some of us are trying to write serious literature. Tigger tumbled out of his headstand and blinked up at Owl. What's got your feathers in a twist, Owl? he asked. Rue added, Yes, you seem extra grumpy today. I am not grumpy, Owl replied sternly. I am merely trying to concentrate. I am writing a very important book about my Uncle Robert. Oh, a book, Rue exclaimed. What's it about? It's about the life and times of my late Uncle Robert, Owl said with great pride. A great and wise bird. He lived in far-off lands, like Pretoria. Now go away, please. With that, Owl pulled his head back inside, leaving Tigger and Rue puzzled but curious. A mysterious voice the rest of the Hundred Acre would soon heard about Owl's big writing project. Word traveled fast, as it always does in the wood. Rabbit, being the sensible one, gathered the others to discuss what Owl might be up to. I think it's something big, Rabbit said as he paced back and forth. Do you think he's inventing something? Piglet asked nervously. Something like a machine? No, said Rabbit, but whatever it is, we need to find out. Christopher Robin, always ready for an adventure, suggested they go ask Owl directly. So, they marched up to Owl's house, and Christopher Robin gave the bell pull a firm tug. Owl, he called. We're going to have a picnic. Do you want to come? No, came a voice from inside. I'm busy. How about a row on the river? Christopher Robin tried. Don't like rivers, Owl replied, or swans. Noisy, vulgar things. Christopher Robin, undeterred, shouted, I've got a present for you, Owl. There was a pause. Then, not interested, too busy. The friends exchanged looks. It was clear that Owl wasn't going to open the door, but Piglet, ever the brave little fellow, tiptoed around to the back of the house. He peered through a gap in the curtains and gasped. Owl is writing a book, Piglet whispered. I saw him with a quill, but he didn't look like he was writing anything. We need to get him out of the house, Rabbit declared. It can't be healthy for him to stay cooped up like that. The friends put their heads together and came up with a plan. Rabbit, being the best at digging, burrowed underneath Owl's house with the help of friends and relations. Soon they were inside, sneaking around while Owl was in his pantry. Lottie, the clever otter, slipped into Owl's study and pulled a sheet of paper from his desk. She scurried back to the others and held it up. It's a page from his book, Rabbit said excitedly. The paper read, Uncle Robert, a legend in his lifetime. The mysterious message the next morning, as all sat down to continue his writing, something strange happened. Just as he was about to start the next sentence, a loud thump came from outside his window. All flapped his wings and flew to the window, where he saw a large sign stuck to the ground. The sign read, I don't want you, T.O., write my story. Signed, Uncle Robert. Owl blinked in disbelief. What is this nonsense, he muttered. But before he could return to his writing, there was another thump, and a second sign appeared, this time inside his study. 
It read, I mean it. Owl's feathers bristled. Who's there, he called, but no one answered. Suddenly, a voice echoed through the room, a deep, ghostly voice that seemed to come from the very walls. Owl, the voice said, stop writing that book. It is I, your Uncle Robert, speaking from beyond the grave. Owl's eyes widened. Uncle Robert? It can't be. It is, the voice insisted. And I don't want you to write this book. Owl was speechless. But before he could gather his thoughts, the voice spoke again. If you keep writing, it said ominously, you will regret it. The end of the adventure for the rest of the day, Owl couldn't shake the feeling that something wasn't right. He tried to write, but the quill in his hand trembled. The mysterious voice echoed in his head. Finally, after hours of pacing and thinking, all decided that maybe, just maybe, it was best to leave Uncle Robert's story untold. And so, all put down his quill, closed the book, and went outside to join his friends for the picnic he had missed. The next morning, as the sun rose over the hundred-acre wood, all felt lighter, as though a great weight had been lifted off his wings. He didn't know whether the voice had truly been his Uncle Robert or just his imagination, but one thing was certain. There were plenty more adventures to be had in the Hundred Acre Wood, and Owl was glad to be part of them.